I'm Robin Crane, and this is the Growing Your Financial Business, The Woman's Way podcast. Listen, I was a financial advisor for over a decade, and I got so sick of the old archaic strategies that your grandpa used to get clients. What the industry teaches today is still so outdated and just doesn't work anymore. So I had to find a better way for myself, and then I got obsessed with sharing these how-tos with other women like me. The stuff I teach doesn't require giving up your life, your sanity, or your family time. I want women like you to have it easier than I had it so you can thrive in the industry. I've now helped thousands of women grow their financial businesses to multiple six figures, some even seven figures per year. So on this podcast, you're going to get an inside look at how they did it so you can do it too. Let's dive into the show. Welcome, welcome. I'm here with Barbara Provost and Maggie Nielsen. And just to let it out of the bag right away, mother and daughter. Okay. Totally awesome team. Um, They have a company called Purse Strings, which I'm so supportive of and so excited to share with you because this is all so aligned with the mission to increase the footprint of women in the industry at 50%. We're all doing it together. So um, welcome, ladies. Tell us how you got into this and why. Tell them about Purse Strings, what the heck it is, and why you got into it. We'll probably touch base again in about 25 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, Purse Strings uh, was created to help women have a kind of goes to destination to get their questions answered, their financial questions, concerns, um, learn a little something so that they could feel uh, confident and competent to go have conversations with a financial professional. So often women would say that they didn't have a place to go to get their questions answered because they always felt if they went to a financial pro- professional, they were going to be pushed to product. So this is a place as an adult educator that we created for education, training, knowledge, skill, but also it provides a, an amazing directory of all fi- types of financial professionals who we select and vet. They are professionals who really want to work with and engage with female market. So it's a go-to destination for not just learning, but also finding those professionals that are going to be in your court when you need it. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, think of it this way, ladies, if, if you want more, quality prospects this is a good place to to have a profile because essentially what's happening is women are going to learn more and even the most successful women on the planet who don't want to admit to a financial advisor or don't want to admit to one of their friends that they don't have it all together they'll go here for amazing resources to learn about their money and be empowered about their money and learn about all sorts of things and it's free for them to go get all this stuff which is amazing and then they can just click on a little button that says, I want to talk to a financial advisor who's vetted and that they know they're aligned with their values and all these things. And they have a really cool way to do that. And they would connect you as an advisor, if it's the right match, to someone who needs your help. So it's kind of like any financial advisor's dream. Um, and I know as a, when I was an advisor, like the number one challenge I had was how do I get to the right people? Like, I, I don't want to just work with anyone, but I, I kind of have to go to friends and family or I got to wait for referrals. And so being on this platform where women will actually come to you, imagine that mm-hmm. wanting your help, like imagine that's so just amazing. So, um, and it's, it's a perfect fit of a way to help women on both, both sides so that women in the financial services industry can thrive and women outside of the financial industry can have a woman help them thrive financially. So I love it. I love it. I love it. So tell <laughs> us from your, your perspective then, Barbara, how did that come about with you coming together and partnering with your daughter on this? Sure. So when I started really investigating purse strings in terms of what is it women wanted and really having focus groups, I needed a scribe. So I grabbed Maggie she was in high school at the time. I said, hey, grab your computer. I need you to describe for me. And I dragged her to all these focus groups and she took all my notes and she was part of the conversation and she could see and hear what these women's reactions, some of them, one woman actually got up and left when she heard we were going to talk about money. She wanted nothing to do with it. And she heard over and over again, how these women would say, gosh, nobody even looks at me when I'm in the financial uh, conversation. They don't ask me what I want. They just want to push a product. And I think she was curious about all these women. And she'd say to me, mom, why would you hand your money over to anybody that doesn't even look at you? So um, it was curious to her. She went off to college and you know, in college, you meet a lot of other people and it opened her eyes to how other people manage or mismanage their money, especially around college, college expenses, student lending, things like that. And when she finished her MBA, she came back and said, um, well, I said, Maggie, I could use your help. And she's like, mom, it's a pandemic and I could uh, help you because I can't find a job. So Maggie, I just gave your whole story on how you jumped into purse strings. 
She only threw you under the bus right at the end when she said you couldn't find a job, but it's not completely throwing you under the bus because she meant to say couldn't find a job that you were completely aligned with in regards to your passions that would pay you what you're worth and still allow you to make the difference in the world that you are truly meant to make. That's what yeah, she was like she said. Thank you for uh, backing me up there, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, so you basically went to focus groups with your mom and then you kind of found a passion for it. So um, what have you found or what, even as a teenager, you know, in high school, what did you notice? Uh, and maybe your mom said it's some of it, but like, what did you notice were very, very um, kind of pronounced themes as far as women and how they feel across the board. And, and I'm kind of curious, especially about the most successful women, because I think uh, a lot of the women who come to me and they're, you know, really phenomenal what they do as far as being advisors and, and helping their clients. And of course they want high net worth clients or at least, you know, clients they can make a big difference with. And usually if they don't have any money, it's hard to make a big difference with because that's, you know, kind of how the industry is set up. But sometimes they just want to work with everyone because they're like, oh, but everybody, you know, the high school kids need my help and ones who have a million dollars need my help and these need help. And I don't know that the executives really need help. They're probably all set and they probably already have an advisor. And, you know, I don't know that even... I have the value or maybe they're, you know, second guessing themselves. So, so that's from the advisor standpoint, but what have you seen to so can tell these advisors? It's not true um, that the challenges that women were facing, whether they're, you know, very successful or even more successful. Yeah. I mean, so many women would just say their professional doesn't look at them, doesn't talk to them, doesn't require them to be at the meeting. Um, and then, you know, I, I mean, I, I'll never forget when one person just got up and walked out when we were talking about money um, and that's just wild to me. And just over and over again, it was, they would just let their husbands do it. And women would tell stories of their husband spent all their money and got them into, into complete debt, um, which is terrible because you're working all those hard hours for that money. Um, so that's why we say a man is not a plan and we got to get focused. Did you coin a man is not a plan? Oh, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to. I'm trying to keep saying it and then it can be yours. Yeah, actually. Um, uh, Barbara Hewson, who I'm interviewing very soon, I've interviewed once before. Um, she has a book called Pr uh, Prince Charming Isn't Coming, mm. that one. So kind of, you know, similar idea um, that there's not going to be a guy to come rescue you. But just the one this morning said to me that they brought a paycheck to a financial advisor and he goes, ha, hope you marry rich. Oh, my gosh. So, so respectful. So, so amazing. Yeah. So and and what about like, I know I can say from experience, like, and I'm always very vulnerable about my situation and myself is that, you know, I was a financial advisor for 10 years and now I'm a successful seven figure business owner. I'm not saying that to like, you know, pat myself on the back. Trust me. It's not everybody's, everybody's dream, but I say that because on paper that that looks really great. Of course, I know what I'm talking about. Not only am I a successful business owner, but I also was a financial advisor for a decade. And I can tell you, I can list all the mistakes I've made, like not on one piece of paper. You know, it would take a lot more just like uh, the taking too much risk. That's very, very common for business owners is that we have this tendency to just like, I don't know why you're making good money. You shouldn't have to take as much risk, right? Because then you just keep stocking money away. But it's like this, this entrepreneurship, this drive to like do more. Like, I got to do the best. I I got to get the best returns. I got to do more that I've made mistakes taking too much risk. I've made mistakes not having enough you know, insurance and coverage. And I made mistakes of just not knowing where my money is. I don't mean just like, you know, it's in accounts I don't know, but not knowing how much I have where and paying attention to it. And I'm teaching like financial advisors to grow their business. And sometimes, sorry to say, but even these advisors, I'm asking them about the revenue numbers because I'm all interested in that and want to want to make sure they're growing and make sure I'm helping them create you know massive massive results and, and ROI and they don't have clarity of it. So it's like it's also a common thing like we're you know we everyone no matter how successful they are needs a second eye needs you know maybe a third fourth but like to 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 look at what they're doing and to be able to say like hey like let me hold your hand yeah <laughs> let me walk you through this so you know what have you seen from that end and uh why this is so important i would every like like you said it doesn't matter who you are um i was just on a previous podcast with a woman who teaches you know equity investing and she herself said, you know, I had to rip off the Band-Aid and really dig deep into my own debt and what I was doing and what I was spending. I mean, I've had financial advisors say, oh, I got myself into some trouble and I felt so so much guilt and so much shame because I'm a financial advisor. How how did I do this? You know, but part of it is, um, you know, it stems from so many things. 
bad money messaging that we were given. Maybe um, taking, like you said, the wrong risk, or maybe that um, knee jerk reaction to, I got to buy that. I got to buy that now, you know, whatever it might be. Um, But and it could be the, you know, the shoemaker's children, right? We don't take care of our own finances because we're too busy managing and focusing on other people's finances as well. But, you know, when it comes to money, I think um, sometimes we don't want to look at it because we have a sense maybe it's not where it should be. So I'll well, just look at that tomorrow or something like that. But the reality is, you know, money is a tool. We can't be so emotional over it. We just have to look at what it is and what it isn't and make a plan to move forward. And I would add to that, that even when I was a a broke financial advisor, when I first started and I was struggling and I was a singer songwriter before that. So it's not like I had a lot of assets or anything. And then I came into the industry and because I didn't know how to grow the business, like I struggled for a long time and I felt like a fraud. I had imposter syndrome, which I think like after meeting seven, eight, nine figure earners, everyone has it, especially women. I don't know about the men. I hang out less with the men, but, um, Actually, I was at this mastermind with men and this guy actually on stage who has, I think, an eight figure copywriting business was talking about imposter syndrome. And I was like, whoa, you usually only hear that with women. (laughs) Everyone has the insecurities. Everyone has self-doubt. It's like we're human, but we always assume so like no one else has it. Right. You always assume the person on across the table from you is is absolutely perfect almost, you know, and you know, they have issues, but it's like we assume that they're not as bad as ours. And what I remember vividly when I was doing this is that I had to just come to terms with that and say, okay, I'm not where I want to be financially. I'm not as financially successful as the person across the table from me that I'm advising. But what I do know is that I have knowledge that they don't know. And money is an emotional thing, Mm -hmm. you know? And so if I, from this perspective, knowing what I know about the market, knowing what I know about planning, knowing what I know about goal how people are driven and driven to take action, what their fears are and asking what their fears are. When I got to that point where I actually had a real, like I understood how to have a real conversation, like a sales conversation without being all salesy. I was like, wow, I do have value because clarity is value. And it doesn't matter how much money I have in my investments in my bank account. It's that I provide value and every single woman, especially, and it's men, men too, but when I'm working with women, I'm like every single woman on the other side of the table, they're better at something than I am. And I'm better at something than they are. And as long as I'm not selling expertise in another area or lying about it, and I'm always so transparent now that you can't even like, I tell you too much, TMI, too much information, but, but I'm like, I know I have that value and I'm convicted in that. And I think a lot of women are missing that. And part of what I just wanted to uncover here with just this mission that, that you're on and we're on together is that we women have to embrace that because even a woman who has seven, eight figures in their bank account, or I say bank account loosely, like, you know what I'm talking about, but their investment <laughs> no one has in their bank account anymore. Um, but if you have that much as even net worth, and you're across the table with someone, whether they're more successful or less successful, it doesn't matter because you have value. And that value, like we need you to stand in your value because we women are constantly beating ourselves up and judging ourselves. And if you don't stand in that value, then the woman across the table isn't getting help. And that's why I love what you're doing because you're giving women a place to be seen, women financial advisors, a place to be seen so that they can help others. And you're making those connections. Mm -hmm. And then you're helping women who are too scared to start by going to a financial advisor. Maybe they have one they don't like. Maybe they have multiple millions and they don't feel comfortable about it. And to start and just get the education and learn at their own pace and find resources. And that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, that's perfect. That's so amazing. So um, let's talk a little bit about like why you're so passionate about this, why you want more women in the industry, um, why you want more women to have this information and education around money. Because women are behind in every single thing in the whole universe. I mean, we're, we don't even make dollar for dollar. We've just been taking our rights away from us. Um, we are the safety net for every single thing. Look at the pandemic. We were the teachers. We were the nurses. We were the healthcare workers. We were also the full-time workers. We were the, the chief cook and bottle washer. I mean, we were everything. And, and women just were so stressed out and um, trying to care for their families and hold a a job and everything else. And, you know, we're not getting paid for it. There's too many women have told me, you know, they applied for a job and they know their male counterpart applied for the same job and they, he got $15,000 more starting salary. You know, I mean, every single turn women, I mean, look at pink tax, right? Every mm-hmm. time we turn around, women are being um, 
things are taken away from them. They're not treated fairly. It's going to be what, 135 years before, before we have equity. That's a big reason why ever, all the resources for women are free. We want women to step into their power because ironically, women make and influence 95% of the purchasing decisions in the household because they hold all those jobs, because they buy the food, buy the clothing for the children, make sure you know the utilities are paid, car payments, whatever it might be. They're the chief operating officer of their household and they influence a large amount of purchasing decisions yet you know you go to buy a car forget about it i've heard so many horror stories about women <laughs> trying to buy cars i've experienced it myself you know i mean you go to a financial professional they don't even look at you i mean behind every step of the way and i'm just really sick and tired of it and i really want to empower women money is power and i want them to step into their power and know how to use it Give me some of those amazing statistics. First of all, I had to just Google real quick pink tax because I did not know what that meant. Um, I did it on the slide, but I just figured this might be someone else who didn't know pink tax. So pink tax, it sounds like it's it's when you get charged more for something just because you're a woman. Is that accurate? Like when you go to get your car fixed and they're like... Um, if you go to the store and get disposable razors, the same razors that are in the men's side are going to be $2 cheaper than the same true? disposable rate. Yeah. Than the I, disposable I, I always use my husband's razor. It's way better than mine. I and it's cheaper. Razor. It's cheaper. And cheaper. He's in the dollar club, but not, not razor. <laughs> but, but cause I actually uh, talked to one of my mentors and he was, he was in real estate or helping real, real estate agents. And he said that there was this woman who um, he was helping with foreclosures and short sales. And this woman was trying to sell her house, like got an offer that was, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars yep. lower than a guy yep. just because, you know, she doesn't know, yep. supposedly doesn't yep. know any better, you know? So that's pink tax. It, and, you know, you, you go to the dry cleaners. If I have a white blouse and my husband has a white shirt, they charge me more. They know it's a woman's blouse. They charge me more. And it's only because the buttons are one side than the other. You know, there's really nothing different about it. That's crazy. I didn't realize that. What else? So just a few more, just because I'm curious now. I'm well, first of all, why aren't tampons free? You know, aren't they free in the in the bathrooms? We don't pay for toilet paper. You know, why don't they put these products out there? I mean, how often do you have to have a quarter or whatever it is? You know, when you go to the bathroom, then you're like, shit, I have no change on me. No, I, have, I don't have any. any I know. Ever. I mean, it's just or, or, crazy. Or. You know, that's I, yeah. Don't get, don't get started, right? Okay, yeah. okay. I, I digress. I, I just want to make sure everyone knew it because I didn't know what that meant. So one of the reasons I'm so passionate about this, and I, you said 135 years, and I don't know where those statistics come from because like, it's almost like our destiny is already determined, but how can someone know that when they don't know what we're doing right now? Like we're doing these things, you're doing these things, I'm doing these things. You know, there are other women that are really, really working and pioneering this whole movement to get more women in the industry and help more women outside the industry to be more empowered with their money. So I don't know where these statistics come from with like when they're guessing it's going to take 135 years before we have equity, but how can we change that? Like, how can we um, change our destiny? So we have more women in the industry and we have, we can, you know, it's scary as hell. I don't want to get into the whole, you know, rights, you know, conversations, a whole other conversation, but like one of my friends at this mastermind, this women's mastermind that I was in, we were at seven, eight, nine, 10 figure, I don't know, women, like super successful. And this woman who I, she has like a school in Africa, like she's just really amazing. And she was like, so upset about the, I'm just going to say it, Roe versus Wade situation. And um, this other woman also very successful was like, adamantly, like, we kind of have to let it go because, and she didn't say kind of, she's like, essentially we need to let it go. Like these things happen for a reason, because what happens is this is how you create a movement when there's like, this is how you create an uprise. There's something like this that we never thought would be taken away from us that our rights and who knows what's next, right? To vote and, and homosexual rights. And like these things, like, it's like, holy crap, this is a world we live in. And, you know, at the risk of going political, it's like, we, we have, it, it forces us to take a stand. And what I'm, you know, what I'm proud of in regards to having a voice in this, in this space is that, we all, we women have to take a stand. And you told me before, I think it's 23 million or tw excuse me, 23 trillion, like women basically control the money. We just don't know it, mm -hmm. right? We have money, the more money is going to be passed to women. Mm -hmm. There's the transfer of wealth is going to women. And we all know that the money is power as much as we're, women are like, Oh, don't give me money. I don't need the power. You know, it's like, yes, we do because we need the voice. And, and that, that takes it up the chain to the government and to like having to, to lobbyists and rights and all these things. And so I think it's really important that we embrace that and aren't afraid to, to, Oh, 
I need to make a little bit of money because I only need what's the basics, you know, like, don't, don't be like that. Like go, go make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people on the process of making money, which is what I advocate for. Like make more money, help more people Mm -hmm. is that when you do that, it's not just for yourself. I mean, yeah, you're going to make more money and I'm very luxury. You know, I have to get to have my nanny do things and have, you know, services that I get to afford and do those things. And I don't feel bad about it because I can put my attention on helping more people. And I'm also employing people and that feels good too. Right. But there's so many women who are like, oh no, God forbid I make two. Like I only need to make a hundred grand. Like, well, how about you make a million and then go change the world and make 2 million and then make 10 right. million, hundred million. Right. Um, so I, I just think that's great because we need to have a bigger voice and the money is passing, but we're almost like, I don't want to touch it. It's a little dirty. You know, let me go wash my hands first and we'll, we'll see about that. Maybe I'll touch that money, you know? So I get kind of crazy about that, but what, what do you see, think that we can do about this so we can start to turn this around in a positive direction? Well, vote, first of all, is what we need to do. But if you do Google 135 years, it comes up that that's the gap between men and women. And that's mm-hmm. how long it's going to oh, take. It okay. it, it, that's how long it's going to take before there's um, equity. So, and that set us back because of the pandemic. So we've climbed a lot of ladders and done a lot of work, especially in the you know, working arena to get ahead. But because of COVID, it sent us back. So, I mean, yes, we, you know, a lot of people are upset. Rights have been taken away. I totally agree. It creates movement. It creates people to wake up, get up and do something differently. Um, I I think people really want to make money. I just don't think that they have as many opportunities as men do in our society to make as much money. They just don't. I mean, it just shows you the dollar for dollar, we're not paid equally. And so what, what happens? I'll even tell you this, you know, women have to out-educate themselves to get paid equally. So a woman who has a college degree is getting the same as somebody who has a, a man who has a high school degree. And this is all data that I have. Um, same, she's got to get a master's degree to get the same pay as someone who has a college degree. So what does that mean? We have more student lending, more women and women of color have more student debt that they are now responsible for paying back. So at every point and step of the way, there's a lot of, you know, chip, chip, chipping away at all that women are trying to deal with and put up with. So, um, and the pandemic has set us back any even more. So set us back, women. I, I don't know that reference, like of why women specifically. How did that set us back? Because women have to leave, had to leave their jobs so that they could come home and take care of their children, homeschool their children, take care of those who are sick. So oftentimes, when there's a sick family member, it's the woman who leaves her 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 house or her work. And and so what happens? You you lose your work, you lose your benefits, you lose your contributions, you lose your 401k, you lose your skill set, everything else. And these are not paid jobs that women are taking. They're caring. They're doing care. So they're not earning money. So I think it's true that like all this inequity, we can kind of say just like therapy, like it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not. And we are the only ones that can change it. And right. Part of that change has to happen with the like demanding what you get paid and creating more value. Like I think really money is an exchange of value. And so we might get fewer opportunities. We might not have, you know, we might get paid less if it's up to us, but you still have the choice to accept the job or not. You still have a way to get creative and and show more value if you're getting a job or to, to get to the top of the charts in your financial company. Just, yeah, the other guy has it easier because the couple comes in and they look at the dude, even though the dude sucks. Right. Um, And the, like the, the, the head of the, co- I don't know, there, there's too many, there's so many guys, old boys club. And like, you don't have the same opportunity. We can just accept that, but it doesn't mean we have to accept the results of that. And I do think that that's where we take a stand and say, charge what we're worth, you know, and, and start to work on ourselves. I actually think like the, the, the shortest path to getting there is personal development as much mm-hmm. as, I, as I teach business development. But I know for myself and my business, I told this to my COO not too long ago after going to a speaker training that was like half, you know, personal development that I was like, wow, Ash, I know we can just do better, make more money, help more people if I just focus on improving me. I know, mm-hmm. I just know mm-hmm. that'll help me manifest better, you know, and we women at least believe in this woo-woo, airy-fairy manifesting stuff, but this is real. <laughs> And you can, yeah. laugh or you can, you know, you can not believe it, but I know manifesting is real. I have proof after proof after proof. This is real. And many men won't go there and won't believe it. And so we actually have, we have 
an, an advantage in that sense because we're believers, you know, and, and I don't mean Jesus, I'm Jewish, but we're, we're <laughs> believers in a sense. Like we know we have the ability and we can create success. It's just, we have the self doubts. So the more you work on you and improving yourself and in becoming a better person and having faith and focusing on what's working instead of what's, Oh, we're, we don't have the same, you know, opportunities. I'm not saying you're saying this. I'm just, that's just a fact. Okay. You're just saying facts. What I'm saying is we have to step over it, step above it, step through it, step around it. And to say, how can I just improve me? Mm -hmm. And then I show up with having more value. I show up with, with, with demanding that this is the respect that I get. And this is also the expectation for what I can create in my life. I swear that's going to turn everything around. It's hard work though. Like you actually have to work on yourself. It's hard work to do. It's harder than even working on your business, but every woman I've helped who works on herself improves her business. And I also give the skills and the, you know, all the, all the trainings to actually work on your business, but you know, most of the time I'm really working on their mindset while I'm giving them the trainings to, so they can actually take the action and do what I tell them to do. So, um, yeah. So any, I know I went off on a tangent there as I do, but anything else to add that before we tell them how to find you, um, just to this crazy, intense, passionate conversation. Well, it's, it's just about getting started, right? Like you said, stepping over your fear, stepping through it, um, screw the money, messaging we've been given our whole life and know that your money is your power. And it's the foundation to everything that you ever want to do in your life. You have to know your money. So get started, start wherever you are, engage with the right organization, hopefully purse strings, but there's a lot out there. Engage with the right professionals that are going to be kind of in your court, are going to build relationship with you and help you along the way, answer your questions, you know, cheer you on, share your successes, help you over the hurdles, things like that. Because you need to, every woman needs to know about their money, where they are, where they want to go, how they want to use it, how they can earn it. And I would just say they need to start today. Yesterday would have been a good time to start, but if they haven't started yesterday, start today. Anything to add, Maggie? Money gives you choices. So yeah, I would just say let's keep becoming financially fearless. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So we have a special offer for you. We just decided before this. Um, so we want to give you, uh, what do you, uh, basically a membership, you call it a membership profile membership to purse strings, um, with a 10% off discount. And to do that, you actually don't just qualify. We, we do need to, actually, these two ladies are going to vet you to make sure it makes sense because, you know, obviously if it doesn't, we don't, you know, it wouldn't make sense for, for you to pay. Um, but you get 10% off your membership. You'll get a profile. And then every, you know, every month you're basically, you know, have the opportunity to be connected with women who need your help. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to schedule a call and you just go to robincrane.com forward slash PS as in purse strings. Yep. Make sure you spell my name right with a Y. Um, that way we know you get your 10% off. You come from here and uh, they'll talk to you and make sure it's the right fit and hook you up with that. So anything else to tell them about the membership, kind of what's included and how it works since I probably butchered that? It's just um, a lot of networking between other wonderful professionals and then helping bring education to the female market, really sharing your expertise um, and then being on our um, directory. So when women need a professional, they can come and find you and, you know, who you are, what you'd like to do, who you like to serve. Um, so you can really find someone that fits um, you and your personality. Awesome. Awesome. And it's very, like, I, can I tell them the price? Cause it's just so. Weird. Yeah, sure. It's, it's only a thousand dollars a year and you get 10% off. Like, it's just crazy for the value that you get. Like, it's almost, I have to coach these ladies on it's too little because they won't, you know, uh, they won't really, really, um, recognize the value, let's say, but it makes no sense to not do this. So basically it makes all the sense in the world that you have to do this because it's crazy. Like there's someone out there who needs your help. It's also going to help your business. Um, there's no way I believe like you wouldn't get your money back because now you have opportunity, not even if it's just learning from someone else and, and building your centers of influence, everyone in the industry is always like, Oh, you need centers of influence, you need relationships. Well, it lives here. So make sure to be part of this and part of this community as well. And part of this movement to be part of the solution to create equity with women in finances. So thank you for joining us. And thank you guys so much for being here. And we'll see you next time on growing your financial business, the woman's way. Bye-bye. Robin. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. I actually have the link for the tag challenge, the appointment generator challenge. So instead you can just go to femalefinancialadvisors.com and register right now so that you can get five quality appointments 
in just five days. Now, this is not around, you know, you having to talk to friends and family and get all awkward. This is not about you having to spend marketing dollars online or create a whole funnel. This is going to be easy. It's simple. It happens in five days. If I can get you five quality appointments in five days, then you know that you can have the best year of your life because you just need to get in front of more of the right people. We will walk through it together as we do it. So do not miss this. And if you can, if you're smart, do VIP, spend a few extra bucks and you can actually spend time with me on Zoom where I can connect with you, get to know you and really help you get those quality appointments so that you can grow your business. And um, go ahead again, register at femalefinancialadvisors.com. You'll find it all there. It's happening, coming up very, very soon. So make sure to register, claim your spot, get in on this, get excited about it, block your calendar because you need to spend about an hour to an hour and a half uh, a day with me on the Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so that you can get these results. And it does work. The most appointments I think we got in those five days, uh, someone, I think it was Dana, got 33 appointments. So you can be my best student and go well beyond the five quality appointments. Go to 10, go to 15, go to 20, and set your, yourself up for the best year ever. Can't wait to see you at the Tag Challenge. See you there. Thank you again for listening to Growing Your Financial Business the Woman's Way.